Hello everyone, I'm back! No, we don't quite need a Poker Guys remake yet, even though the original by Toby Hooper on a shared idea with Steven Spielberg was an absolutely incredible movie. I like the entire series. Right now we're going to be getting into the Turbo Graphics 16 Mini. I'm going to add all the files uh, game-wise that are going to be on the Mini. And this is incredible because whereas we had the original Mini NES and Famicom Mini, they had a different lineup of games due to the different regional differences. But in this case, they're the exact same identical lineup for all three systems. The Core Graphics Mini, the PCE Mini, and the Turbo Graphics 16 Mini. Uh, we have to wait until March of 2020 in order to buy this system, of course. But uh, for right now, we can play this on our PlayStation Classic or Mini NES or SNES Classics. I'm scanning the directories right now, and uh, speaking of Toby Hooper, he's also had some other incredible movies, such as the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and of course Funhouse, a movie that I just happened to tune into after I watched the original Superman with Christopher Reeve, and then of course uh, he was also behind the Joe Ball uh, horror movie called Eaten Alive, about a guy who ran a hotel and fed uh, unwitting victims to his pet alligator. But I'm going to go to low content right now, not to change the subject or anything. And there are actually uh, TurboGrafx-16 games, PC Engine games, Super Graphics games, and of course TurboGrafx CD games. And uh, you have 11 total games there. Let me go to low content real quick. I was in the wrong session. And you're going to actually see the games that are going to be on it as far as the TurboGrafx CD games. And everybody knows about Dracula's Rondo of Blood. Also a great Netflix uh, anime series right now. And uh, we have Bomberman Panic Bomber. A mixed uh, match three game. Then we have Show Nikki, a self aware, humorous game if you like stuff like Parodius. Very, very cool. And they have this on like every system you can conceivably imagine from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2, Sega Saturn, and so on. They're all very, very humorous games like Parodius. Then we have uh, Ginga Fuke, Densetsu Sapphire, a fantastic gem of a game. I put it right up there with the likes of Ikaruga and Radiant Silver Gun. Gradius 2, a fantastic arcade port. And uh, we're actually going to do this as our very first game right now, Lords of Thunder. This is probably the best shmup you could ever conceivably play on the Turbo Graphics CD. And we can run it with two cores. We can run it with the Super Graphics core, and we can also run it with the PCE Fast core. I'm going to run it with the PCE Fast core right now. And uh, this is a very, very difficult, tremendously hard shmup game. But there's one little uh, bonus to many of these games. Nearly all of them have cheat codes built into them. But we're going to try the game legitimately first. And uh, let's go in here. It's like Fantasy Zone and Forgotten Worlds where you actually have the ability to go to a shop and buy stuff. So we're going to do that and we can actually do Mega Man style select different stages. But we're going to do the very first stage. And you can see some of these stages are kind of based around elements. This looks kind of like a fiery style stage as does this one here. So let's get the show on the road here. Uh, we'll pick the water armor here. And this, by the way, has one of the most incredible soundtracks ever. So I only have 300 uh, currency right now. I want to try to use this uh, sparingly. Uh, I'm going to probably want to boost my health a little bit. I'll use 200 for health. And then I'm going to use one bomb. We need to have a bomb for some of the more tougher to deal with enemies. And again, this is a very, very difficult game. I'm not even sure I'm going to make it past the first stage. But I'm going to try it anyway. But listen to this awesome... Stevie Ray Vane, Steve Vai Styles, uh, Metal Electric soundtrack here. And this is way, way ahead of its time. Remember, this is out when stuff like uh, Nintendo Entertainment System still had games coming out, and uh, Sega Genesis was first coming out. The system, uh, and of course the original TurboGrafx-16, were meant to compete with the NES, but in the end they were competing with the Sega Genesis. And it flopped completely in the United States, but in Japan, it went on for a number of more years, and there were hundreds of TurboGrafx CD games. I'd say there are about 66% uh, more Who cards and uh, CD-based games in Japan than there were in the United States, where it failed miserably. I did want the system, but it was too expensive when it initially came out, but I was luckily able to pick it up when I worked in a video game store, and somebody came to trade in a Turbo Duel with Godzilla in we, uh, uh, Wise Book 1 and 2 and a few other hoot card games. I was just very, very ecstatic and uh, gave him $60 in cash for it and uh, I never looked back. And around the same time I was able to go online uh, in the paper at the time before we did Craigslist and stuff and actually buy a whole slew of Sega Master System games and a system. I was very ecstatic about that too. 
and I got a bunch of games for both of them from uh, a Canadian retailer who was phasing the games out at about five to ten dollars per cartridge. And uh, Turbo Graphics 16 has uh, quite a few arcade ports. I mean, and you're gonna get quite a few of these in the transition on the PCE uh, mini that's coming out next year, including R Type and Ninja Spirit, amongst other games. So I'm hoping I can make it to the stage here. And I'll show you the cheat code after I beat the stage if I do beat it. And if you ever get any uh, health that shows up, you damn well better dive at it. Because you're going to need it in this stage. Okay. And there's also another game made by the same company uh, called Gate of Thunder, which came as a packing game with the original system along with uh, Bonk's Adventure 3. Okay. I'm loving this scroll in here. Nice paradise scroll in uh, two layers. Just like on the Sega Genesis. Okay, here's an enemy that we want to pay attention to the boss pattern on. Okay. So far, so good. Oh, I got a hit there. But yes, one of the, uh, I'd say this is one of the top ten shmups of all time. I still pick our type as my number one favorite. I'm just a little bit biased and have a personal interest in that game. Plus, I love Hiram. I wish you'd be near the end boss battle here. I'm making this game look a little bit easier than it really is. It is a very, very difficult game, to say the least. I think I'm on the boss battle uh, within the next few seconds here. Okay. And one thing that kind of sucks about the Turbo Graphics uh, 16 is that the shortcut to reset the system is select and start. So if you're going to be doing any retro settings, do it before you start the game, otherwise you might accidentally exit the game. I have one bomb left, let's try to use this uh, appropriately. Take this guy out. Now I'm very, very happy that we got Dracula X by no blood, and we actually have Snatcher on the system as well. Even though Snatcher is completely in Japanese, you're going to have to use a translation guide if you hope to play it. Okay, we got this covered here. So now I'm going to actually uh, restart the game. And we're going to do the cheat code so that you can see uh, how that works out. And literally every game you can imagine has cheat codes. I'm going to try to uh, include some of these in my release to make things a little bit easier. But I would not recommend playing around with cheat codes until you actually get a feel for the game legitimately. So try beating the game legitimately if you can. But uh, you're going to go into configuration, change level to super, music to two. And then you're going to uh, hold down the select button and push the two button, which would be the A button on your controller. That little ding means that I have it. Now I'm going to change it back to normal difficulty. Exit. And then we're going to go to the next stage in the lineup here. I'll go to the uh, ice or water stage or whatever it is. And I'm going to pick the fire armor because that should go good against water or ice. And then I have 10,000 here. I can buy everything at the wazoo. I have an elixir. If I die, lose all my health, I'll be restored immediately. I can buy all the bombs. I can uh, put my power level up for more attack. I can put my health up to the max, and I can uh, buy a shield so I can take a few hits before I lose energy. I'm all out to the wazoo right now, and I can even buy an extra continue if I want to, or two, or three. Okay, let's try to stage out for a brief moment, then we'll move on to another game. I'm loving the slap bass style music, it reminds me a lot of Primus right now. And uh, how many of you are aware that Les Claypool actually tried out for Metallica, but he's rejected because they didn't want to have a sound that hinged primarily on bass? I'm glad that things worked out, just like with Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. It worked out way better than going their separate routes. And uh, Dave Mustaine is still putting out some solid albums. I'm still happy that uh, Metallica and Megadeth finally uh, mended their woes as far as their uh, relationship because they did not get along for a number of years, like a good two decades plus. And I love seeing Megadeth, Metallica, Slayer, and Anthrax all playing together in one single concert. I didn't go there because it was overseas, but I got to see the video of it, which was tremendously amazing. All four of the bands are just awesome. Pioneers of the metal scene as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, we're going to try another game right now. We're actually going to go to the playlist that I now have. And we have uh, two in the Super Graphics list there. And the Super Graphics is kind of like uh, essentially a follow-up system. Kind of like when they tried to add for the Sega Genesis with a 32X, which was also a considerable flop. But the Super Graphics was able to play like five games only. And then it had double RAM usage. And then uh, 
other than that, it really wasn't tremendously different, and not a step up from even the Turbo Duo. But we're going to move to this list here. We got Air Zonk, Alien Crush, April Gateball, Blazing Lasers, another shmup, Bomberman 93, Bomberman 94, Bomber's Revenge, Kid Dash, Shu Man Fu, which I don't have the artwork for here right here. Then we have some duplicates, Dungeon Explorer, which is a great Godless style game, which used a five-player uh, tap that you're able to get for it. You're going to be able to buy this when the mini comes out. Another nice bonus is the original TurboGrafx-16 only had one controller port, so you can only hook up one controller unless you had the tap. We have uh, Fantasy Zone and Gradius, which we're going to play right now. And I actually think this is my favorite version of Gradius. Uh, we're going to run this with uh, PC Fast. And I have it on my playlist now. Okay, let's make another game look a little bit easier than it really is. This is one of the hardest shmups you can ever play in your lifetime. But I'm going to try to make it look like a cakewalk as far as the levels that I play right now. You can do a Konami code in this as well. When you start the game, you can do up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B and start. From being paused, and then you'll have a fully powered up ship. But I'm going to try to play it legitimately for right now. And uh, some of you might be wondering why I have widgets enabled. Watch the bottom left of the screen. I can use my X and Y button to do turbo fire mode activate, which really, really helps in getting leveled up initially. I have no qualms about using turbo fire in my shmup games, so I can really focus on the crazy insanity at hand. But now I have two speed ups. I don't want to get too many, otherwise the Maui stage is going to be tremendously difficult to navigate, mobility wise. But I want to go for a uh, laser and then a uh, missile next. And you're not going to want to have turbo fire enabled for the laser, as you can see it just does one solid wave and takes everything out. Oh, I lost one power up there, but I'll make up for it. Okay, let's get a few more options here. I don't really think I'm going to need a shield into at least the next stage. And uh, speaking of which, when I used to play the NES counterpart for this, on the Nintendo Entertainment System, I actually played this in slow motion the first time on my NES Advantage, which I absolutely loved. The ability that it had a turbo fire for the start buttons, so in the game that could pause with the start button, you were able to do uh, slow motion mode activate. Uh, I need some more options and lasers here. Want to be more beefed up here. There we go. If I have too many speed ups, it'd be really, really difficult to move around in this stage. There we go, that should be enough to get me going here. You never know what's uh, around the next corner, I mean. Uh, they can be fire coming from anywhere the first time you play it. You'll see what I mean in a moment here. Right there. They can easily take you out if you're not uh, prepared for it. I have room for a few more options. I can get uh, four options total. And these options are very, very nice. They actually uh, are like the orb in our type where they can actually protect you from enemy fire. And I do like that the boss that you fight after here, and I, that little ding sound was me getting a free life. I can actually make it through the, uh, nearly the entirety of this game on NES and Journal Graphics 15, as well as the arcade, uh, from playing it enough times over the years. And I do like that the boss battle that you're fighting right here is actually a little Easter egg homage to the original Gradius at the beginning of Blades of Steel on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Beautiful thing indeed, just like you played the first stage of Galaga in the beginning of Ridge Racer for PlayStation 1. I always found that incredibly awesome as well. Okay, let's try to get a little bit more leveled up here. Now I'm probably going to want uh, a shield to protect me in case I uh, muck things up. I'll go for a shield next. Just to keep myself safe. Now I can take a few frontal hits here, and I have the shields behind me. I'm nearly invincible. Just don't get any speed ups or you're going to be screwed. It's very, very difficult to navigate if you have them. I can usually get by the entire game with only two or three of them at the most. Okay, I'm going to at least try to get to the next stage. I think I can get to the next stage at least. And I lost my shield because I hit the, uh, <laughs> that protect me, though. I can still make it. My little pea shield here. And that slowdown's actually working to my benefit right now. 
I can actually have a little more time to concentrate and focus. One of the nice things that made Gradius 3 on Super Nintendo real easy to play was the slowdown factor. You can actually see what's going on. I mean, I'm just going to stay right here. I'm not going to be around here. I'm just going to just let everything come right at me and take it out. Yes, you can do that quite a bit in these games. Just like in the uh, last stage in Kid Icarus, you can actually do the entirety of the last stage at the very top off without a single enemy touching you until you scroll through the second time. Then you have to go down so you can fight Medusa. But we should be on the Maui stage in a moment here. Once I take on uh, the boss again. Okay, let's make it. The slowdown's helping me out a little bit here. Beautiful, beautiful slowdown. <laughs> yes, you're gonna have this on the uh, Turbo Graphics Mini when it comes out because this existed on the real hardware, of course. And even though it doesn't look like I'm hitting the enemy, I actually am. Almost there. Okay. Let's try to get a little bit more leveling up here and take on a few Maui heads. I'm definitely going to want a shield here. Okay, we got three of those. We need a shield now. You definitely want to be nice and powered up for these Maui heads. That's usually the stage I would, uh, I would succumb to on the original NES. Perfect timing. And I'm trying to think of what game I'm going to showcase next for the tail end of this video. Maybe I'll do a wise book 1 and 2. Oh, either that or throw it in the next video. This is definitely going to be a multi-part video. But yes, this is a very, very difficult stage. And uh, you're probably going to get to it the first time. Yeah, I just uh, stop paying attention there for a moment. So we're going to move on to another game. Uh, let's try the uh, wise book 1 and 2. I'm going to show you a few tricks. No, actually, I'm going to do something else right now. Because I've been showcasing two-player mode activate. Let's go to Kadash right now, and I'm going to do two-player mode activate on it. Why not? So I'm going to start the game initially, and it is a very, very cool side-scrolling gauntlet-style game. And I have to do this one more time. And I'm a big fan of these games that are side-scrolling, brother, beat-em-up, hack-and-slash. Games that follow the vein of the spiritualistic, stylistic approach of games like Dungeons & Dragons, Shadow of Mysteria, and Tower of Doom. These games are impeccable achievements and never ever get old. And they're incredible with their two-player and more mode activate, which we're going to be doing right now, guys and gals. Retro settings, input, and you're going to be able to do this with any of the latest releases on all three minis. NES, SNES, and PlayStation Classic. You're going to go to the two-player binds and go down to where it says device index and change it to a PlayStation Classic for the PS Classic. Classic, and of course CloverCon for the mini NES or SNES respectively. And when everything's said and done and you want to rinse and repeat and revert back to uh, the proportions that you started out with, disable it. And that will avoid any potential issues with cores of games that should not have this activated. But for right now we're going to do two player mode activate and we're going to try to get to the first stage here. Great, great game. And I love that working designs and title are both behind this. Working designs uh, works on many, many RPG translations, including the great, great Turbo Graphics CD game Cosmic Fantasy 2. Two player mode activate will use the Fighter and Ninja. And if you haven't guessed this already or haven't seen my previous videos, two player mode activate is the ability to use two controllers as one. Highlander style, essentially. We're going to enable Turbo Fire as well here. Bam, widget. Okay, there's our medicine orb to help us out there. We're gonna do a little bit of farming here. I used to, when I played Willow on the original Nintendo or even Rygar, I would actually tape the uh, turbo button down on my uh, NES Advantage, walk away for about a half hour, and come back and have my characters nice and leveled up. And even in games like uh, Batman, the uh, uh, movie-based game, where you have to get to the final Joker battle, you have to go to that big, big uh, tower, it is very, very nice to have all your uh, weapons fully upgraded. Kind of like Mega Man 2 as well. Because we all know how hard the Wily stage is without your weapons. Here we have Green Slime, the most predominantly common enemy recurrent wise in many of these RPG games from uh, Kid Dash to Dragon Warrior and even in the old Canadian 
a TV show. Can't do that on television, which uh, I don't know, but uh, Lance Morse, I got him starting there. And remember some of them nice uh, phrases like the chef. I heard that. I used to love that show when I was little. I'm so happy that we got some of them amazing, amazing Canadian productions. I mean, great, great show for the time. Never ever gets old even to this day. The locker room show. We're gonna do one other thing right now. We're gonna up the ante here. We're gonna go into retro sentence input, and this is another beautiful thing. We're gonna go into uh, hot key binds, and right here we can actually do fast forward toggle and simply uh, activate the button you want to do. Bam. And if you want to disable it, come back and just simply push the start button like I just did. But we're going to have it on for right now. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, grinding right now, farming to get leveled up. Bam! Look how awesome this is. We should be able to get leveled up pretty quick here. Just don't let go of that turbo button. <laughs> Or you might have some enemies sneak up on you very quick. And you see my ninja's gonna be the one getting all the level in here. My warrior ain't gonna get a single shot in that's why it's not any enemy yet. Very nice way to level up here. I usually level up to about four. I'm actually gonna pause my video for a moment here. Okay, I'm up to level 4. So what I did is basically, uh, I made sure I wasn't attacking with the ninja so I could get a nice hit on the enemy like this. Bam. So I'm going to try to get to the rest of the stage now. But yeah, level 4 is definitely the, uh, acceptable level you're going to want to have to get to this, uh, stage. Let me get these characters lined up real quick. And I can catch up, uh, the warrior here by having turbo fire and just slowly get aligned with them. There we go. There we go. And this jump part is going to be the part that's probably going to mess me up really bad. I definitely don't want to fall in the water. It's going to screw everything I just did up. Oh, no. Poor warrior. Nice knowing you, dude. Okay. Hopefully I can still make it to the stage, though. Okay, we're gonna fight these, uh, these other two, uh, Shadow Link style. Where you kinda move up and down and get a nice hit. And I hate going down the, the angle here. It's gonna be a little tricky of taking some of these enemies on. There we go, that's working out well. This is actually a, a better spot to level up than the other place. You can almost always find a better spot to level up. Bam, level five. Nice. We should be nearing the end boss here very, very soon. And that wasn't good. Now we gotta take on the spider too. We're almost there. I should still have uh, an elixir for each character here. And I remember some uh, rocks are gonna be flying at me here. Hopefully I can get through here without getting hit. Not gonna happen though. Boss battle there. Coming up. Okay, let's see if I can pull this off. Level 5 should be able to take this out of me on really quick and easy. Just like that. Okay, that's Kadash. And we're going to disable the two-player mode to activate uh, here. Go back to it. And we're going to do one more game. Bam. Okay, now we're going to do one final more game. I know I always say I'm going to do one more game, then I do multiple more games. We're going to go to another uh, TurboGrafx CD game, a game that I got with my system many years ago. And another thing that I didn't show you about the system, we're actually going to have a few duplicates among the system. You actually get both versions of Wise Book 1 and 2, the Japanese as well as the USA version. But we're, of course, going to be playing the English version right now. Uh, let's get the show on the road. This was such an incredibly cool game at the time because it was literally out when Sega Genesis was out and Nintendo was still at the tail end. This game just blew my mind, just like Sega CD. And for the record, TurboGrafx CD was the very, very first system to ever utilize games on the CD format. But let's check this out for a moment here. And again, I had this game and Godzilla as my first two games on my Turbo Duo when I lucked out on it. 
And we're also going to do uh, the fast forward mode activate on here. We're going to go into uh, RetroArch settings again so I can show you how to do this. It is phenomenally helpful on RPG games, but you don't want to sit there for minutes on end. You're going to go to hotkey binds, and you're going to go to fast forward toggle, or fast forward hold, whichever way you'd like to do it. And then I'm going to put it back onto my R trigger. Bam. And then we're going to resume. And it has a phenomenal soundtrack, but I want to be able to get into the game, so I'm going to fast forward right through this stuff. And I'm going to show you how to start the game for those of you who have never played this. And they also did a great, great remake of this on PSP, as well as on even PS4 and Xbox One. So yes, you would be waiting a couple minutes just to get through this part alone. I just want to get into the town and get the show on the road. Okay. So I gotta go into the store and see what this is all about. And unlike some games where you gotta go and talk to everybody in the town, you can actually get right into the action nearly immediately in this game. I need to purchase a sword, a shield, and armor from the weapon shop. Okay, so let's go do that. I have a thousand gold here. And the weapon shop is right over to my right, nice and easy to find. There's my uh, armor and shield shop. I will buy, uh, obviously I'm not going to be able to buy the longsword or katana right now, but I'll buy a sword sword. Which I accidentally pushed the wrong button and I exited the store. Remember, Japanese games typically use the reverse, where if you're trying to push forward, you're really going backwards. Okay, I bought this uh, sword. And here's where things get a little bit tricky. You have to equip these in a very specific way. You'll see what I mean in a moment here. Okay, I'm going to try to buy my armor. Chain armor, uh, 400 gold. Okay, I have that. I need 700 gold. So I'm, I'm 600 gold short right now, so I can't buy it. I have to actually go fight enemies in order to get enough money to buy the shield. So I'm going to go to my equipment here. Select button, equipment. And I go to sword. Even though it looks like it's equipped, I have to actually click it. I have to do the same thing for each item. There we go. Now we can go fight some enemies here. Which I can leave the town nearly immediately instead of being stuck in town, having to talk to everybody, and you have guards keeping you from leaving the town. You know how that goes in many games. And like highlight that uh, crappy, crappy NES game, which is still fun to play for a laugh. Uh, you fight enemies simply by walking into them. The music is really cool. And guess what? Turbo fire, uh, or should we say, fast forward mode activate. Bam! I can get my 700 a lot quicker here. Too bad you can't do this in high light. High light is just so incredibly difficult and cumbersome and tedious, even if you try to do this. But yes, I just stay out here doing this with fast forward mode activate until I get enough gold. And I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to pause it again. Okay, I'm pretty close here. And I'm actually going to slow down so you can hear this incredible music. Kind of sounds like it's music right out of Never Ended Story and Fantastica. I expect to see a Treyu riding along on Artax or even on the Luck Dragon Falcor right now. I remember many years ago seeing a funny video on YouTube where they had Falcor uh, being voiced over by, Ar by Sylvester Stallone. That thing is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. But we're almost there to 700 here. It really does feel like uh, never running story music here. It's that epic. Okay, now we can go back to town and buy our shield. And then we go back to the shop and they'll tell us our next mission. And even though I said I'm going to play one more game, then one more game, then one more game, I might do one final game. I have the perfect one in mind. It is a game that is actually censored for a United States release, so I think I'm going to do it. And I push the button accident again by accident again. That works on the PSP the same way, where the uh, X in the uh, circle actually reverse, just like uh, what it is for some of these games. Okay? Let's equip that real quick. You have to have these equipped, otherwise uh, you're not going to be able to be registered as having them in your inventory when you go into the shop. Okay, let's see what she has to say. I'm 
want to put I know about it already, so I don't have to hear her jib jab about everything. Oh, she told. Oh, I put no anyway. Oops. Well, I got a crystal here, and I can go to my next mission. So I'm good to go here. I can actually do a retro state and come back to the game. But we're going to do one final game. We're actually going to show you uh, two versions here. I'm going to my playlist here. And um, we're going to go to JJ and Jeff, which is a very, very interesting platform game. A little bit like Adventure Island. Uh, we're going to run this with the PCE Fast Core. Again, this game is quite a bit like Adventure Island, but the controls are not quite as precise. But it's still a fun venture nonetheless. In a great addition to the library for the Turbo Graphics 16 Mini. It has a nice uh, sense of humor, which is even funnier in the Japanese version, which I'll show you next. It would have been nice to have both versions on here. If you're going to do any duplicates, why not JJ and Jeff or uh, Kato and Ken, the Japanese equivalent? I'll show you in a moment here. I just got McDonald's fries, a little secret there. Coin in a fountain. Uh, we have a uh, spray paint, which is not the easiest to use. We also have a jump kick. And the birds actually drop off. Uh, you'll see what they drop on you. Spray paint. The birds drop dookie turds on you. They censored the one thing, but not the dookie turds. Okay, now we're going to play the Japanese version, which is uh, Kato and Ken. I'm going to go to low content Star Trek Tree. Tell me I have the entire PCE collection. And we're going to go to Kato and Ken. And I'll do another video. If there's any specific game you'd like to see in the next video, let me know. But this is our final, final, final game for the video. And you're going to see uh, something that was censored in the United States version uh, for some inexplicable reason. But it's something that would definitely make Jim Carrey right at home. Otherwise, the game is pretty much the same thing. So we're going to get to the same part I got to and we're going to try out our different weapon. See if we have our McDonald's fries. Yeah, we still got our McDonald's style fries. Our coin in the fountain. But we have a different weapon, which you're going to see in a moment. Check this out. Bam! We can fart on enemies! Yeah! We can do that all day long. Dookie turd still intact. Take out the kitty shack, Gopher. <laughs> And let's take out the Bulldog as our final enemy here. Oh yeah! Hope you enjoyed the video guys and gals, there'll be more to come!